If your company's fiscal year runs in line with the calendar year, then it's dead easy to classify your dates into quarters and years for reporting. However, if your fiscal year is different to the calendar year, then you need to use formulas to automatically classify the dates into their fiscal periods. Let's take a look. Before we look at classifying dates into fiscal periods, let's first look at classifying them into calendar periods. We can use the roundup function to return the quarter from a date. We need to extract the month from the date here and then divide it by three and we want to round it up to zero decimal places. So close, round up, press enter, and you can see it's extracted the quarter for each month. The year is even easier. We can use the year function to extract it from the date. And there we have a list of calendar, quarters, and years. Of course, if you're using a pivot table to do your analysis, you don't need these formulas because you can use the pivot table grouping tool. In Australia, our financial year starts on the 1st of July and we can convert these dates into their fiscal periods using the choose function. Now the first argument for choose is the index number. I'm going to use month to return that index number argument. We're going to reference the date here, close parentheses on month. That's going to be my index number. And then I need to return the values. And the values will be the quarter numbers. So January is month number one, and this is in the third quarter. So when month number one is returned by the month function in the index number, it's going to find the first value in Choose's list of arguments. So we want that as three. February is also in the third quarter, as is March. April, May, and June are in the fourth quarter. July, August, and September are in the first quarter and October, November, December are in the second quarter. So as the month number is returned, it's going to find that corresponding number in the list and return the values that I've entered here. So let's press enter and we can see there, January, February, March, a quarter three, April, May, June, a quarter four, July, August, September, quarter one, and October, November, December are quarter two. Now, if you prefer to have your quarters prefix with a Q, you can simply append Q to the front. Now we get Q3, Q4, Q1, Q2, and so on. Now you can modify the choose values to suit different fiscal year start dates. For example, if your fiscal year started on February 1, then you'd use this formula. If it was April 1, then you'd modify it like this. And if it's October 1, then you'd use this formula. The key is that your fiscal period must start on the first of a month for this technique to work. Now, once you've got your fiscal quarters, the next challenge is to get the fiscal years. Remember, my fiscal year is from July 1st to June 30. So I need to determine if the month is in the first six months of the year or the second six months of the year. And we can use an if formula to do this. So again, we'll use month to extract the month here. And I just need to check if it's less than seven then return the year from the date. Otherwise, return the year from the date plus one. Close if, and there we have our fiscal years. Now, if your fiscal year starts in September, then you'd modify the formula. Instead of seven, you'd have nine in there, and so on. If you work for a retailer, then you're probably familiar with the 454 calendar format. The layout of the calendar in a four-week, five-week, four-week pattern allows like-for-like -like sales comparisons by lining up holidays and ensures the same number of Saturdays and Sundays in comparable months. If your company uses a 454 calendar, then you can use a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP formula that references a table with your period start and end dates sorted in ascending order and then their corresponding quarter and year like I have here. So here we could do V look up, what are we looking up? Well, the date. Where are we looking it up? Over here. And we want to return the quarter, which is in the third column. And we want an approximate match, which is true. Close parentheses on V look up. And now we have our fiscal quarters based on the 454 calendar. Of course, you could append a queue to the beginning if you prefer that format. 
It's the same for the year. So again, we're looking up the date in this table and we're returning the fourth column and we want an approximate match. Close parentheses and now we get our fiscal years based on that 454 calendar. And there are two key points to this method. The dates in the quarter start column must be sorted in ascending order and the last argument in VLOOKUP is one or true. Now the quarter end data here doesn't need to be in this table. I've just included it for completeness. I should also say if your company's fiscal period doesn't start on the first of the month, then you would also use this technique where you explicitly listed your company's quarter start and end dates. Well, technically you only need the start date listed. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.